there's someone here. Go ahead and uh, fire away. How did it feel to bust out the helicopter for recruiting? Oh, it was good. You know, it, um, you know that that was all. It all came about. Everybody thinks it was something that was real flashy and. Um, in, in recruiting, we actually started it out of necessity. Um, the first time I used it, we, we um, when you're trying to get around Phoenix and see a couple games at night or Houston, um, it's basically impossible at six o'clock on Friday afternoon, right? So um, for us, it gave us the opportunity um, at the last place to practice on Thursday and to be with our players at practice and still get to games um, in Houston or East Texas and the same thing last week. So we had the opportunity to, to get there and, and instead of, uh, you know, I was able to see two different games, right, and, and bounce across Phoenix, which is hard to do, 7 o'clock Friday night. But uh, it was good. It was, um, um, you know, it was a productive weekend. Would you, would you be on the road, like in a place like L.A.? Um, we've, we've done it before, yes. Yeah, in places that high traffic areas, big cities that become difficult to get around, particularly if you've got to go um, from one side of the city to the other or, you know, to the valley. I mean, it's, it's yeah, we can do that. How long has that been in the works here? What do you mean? To, to try to do that here. I mean, that's the first time you've done it. Is that something you guys have been kind of planning? Sure. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it comes out of... Uh, trying to get as uh, get to as many places as you can get, um, and then I can and, and for me to get there too, so that um, you know we have relationships with those coaches and communities, and, and people know you know that uh, that we're we're serious about recruiting the, the state, and and uh, we're going to start here first. What, what does that indicate to you from a program and administration commitment standpoint that they're willing to? I'm sure it's more expensive to have a helicopter than to drive a car around. Than to drive a car around? Yeah, just a little bit more expensive, right? Um, although it's it's a lot quicker, you know. But uh, it, it, you know, it, it it says a lot. I think you know our administration's been great. I, I said that from the beginning. You look at the resources that that um, that we have and what we're generating to give us a chance to to win a championship. It becomes important. Um, from the indoor to, to our facilities here now, the, you know what we're doing with the stadium, and how we're getting around and trying to evaluate players. That you you you've got to have resources to do it. Our administration administration understands that. Particularly if you sit down and say, Hey, listen, here's here's the reasons why. Right? It's yeah, this is what it is. First thing everybody sees is a helicopter, but here's the 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 um, here are the reasons why we we'd like to do it and and why we utilize it and and. Um, I think, you know, the, without saying, you know, you, you look at it and you say, well, it's a helicopter, but uh, then you look at it and say, all right, well, we were able to get to a couple different places um, in, in, in the city that we probably couldn't have got to without it. Were you watching the UCLA game live Saturday? And if so, were you tempted to turn it off? Or, you know, when it kind of... <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was in Houston, actually. So, um you know, it was late there, and uh, I just uh, I'd been to a couple different games, so I didn't see the whole game. I, I mean, I've seen it. Um, I've seen it since. So I watched it a couple times yesterday and today. So um, no, I didn't see the whole end of the game until until yesterday. I got back here um, yesterday from Houston. What do you think of the end of the game? Oh, I, you know what a game, huh? You, you got. Um, just a, a kind of a crazy explosive type game. I, I think we, um, just looking at it yesterday and, and today, I think I counted, they, I think UCLA scored 29 points off of turnovers, right? And then um, they lead the country in, in punt returns. Um, and that was evident again. They had two big returns. And so, you, you know, you get 14 points off the return game and then 29 points off of off of uh, turnovers, anything's possible. And, you know, that's, that was a, a crazy game. But, you know, it's going to be interesting because, you know, I, I, I did see their first game, um, you know, and they were a completely different team. We went back and watched tape. You know, what they did the first two weeks, they're not doing that anymore. You know, tight ends, shift, motion, trade, um, all that. That was a completely different offensive game plan. 
against Washington State Saturday. And so, you know, and, and they were successful. And I think, you know, it's kind of interesting. You, you got two teams that um, Saturday that are coming off of playing their best football so far this year, even though the season's uh, early. And it's, it's young. Um, that performance that they had and, and our last performance have been our best football. So you got two teams that, that really are kind of hitting their stride right now, you think. Um, so it, it'll be a heck of a game Saturday. There are two ways to look at um, UCLA's performance. Um, the other night a lot of people said, oh, it gives them confidence coming in here. The flip side of that is maybe it gets your team's attention right. as opposed to well, coming in at 0-4. Which one do you Yeah, but it, it, listen, it's UCLA. They were going to have our attention anyway, right? So um, I don't care, you know, what, what records are. And, and, you know, our players, they know that too. So getting that player's attention wasn't going to be an issue. Um, you know, you, just, you go back to last year. You know, we lose by one point there last year. Rhett was playing. We get a ball punched out through the end zone. Um, you know, a couple turnovers. So no, they, they, they had our attention long before Saturday night. You mentioned the offensive changes they made. Were there things that stood out about about Dorian Thompson? No, I think it's, you know, he's just getting better every week, right? And, uh, you know, he, he looked he looked more comfortable Saturday night than, than he did earlier in the year. And, you know, I think some of the things that they're doing to, to give him um, some pre-snap reads kind of, kind of you know, when you, you got a bunch of tight ends and guys hopping around in motion, there's a whole lot of changes going on on defense, right? Um, and... You can disguise some things a little bit differently with, with some of those tight formations. Um, you know, they spread that thing out Saturday and, and, and made, made Washington State kind of declare what they're doing on defense and gave him an opportunity to, to see some things and use his legs. So, you know, I, like I said, you know, you, you, the, their change from the first game to where they are right now is, is a lot different, a lot different uh, um, structure than, than, than they had in, in, to open the year. How motivated is Khalil uh, for this week after not being able to play against UCLA? Well, I don't know. You know, we had to buy a week last week. So, you know, we, we have a – we were guys gone all weekend. So, um, recruiting, and we gave the players a weekend off. But, um, you know, we'll meet this afternoon with, with a team, get back together. Last week, you know, we, we worked out Monday, Tuesday – um, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, had a shorter practice on Thursday. But uh, just keep guys, you know, in the groove, kind of going, moving along. So, you know, I, I know that I really haven't had a chance to talk to a bunch of guys today. Um, like I said, we meet this afternoon at 3.30. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know that that's the motivating factor. I think, you know, our guys just want to play the best football they can play. I think they, they felt uh, had a different feeling walking off the field against uh, against Tech, and I think they liked that feeling. Um, the, mis the message was, "Hey, let's, let's remember this, but remember what it took to get here, practice-wise." So we've, we've been. That's where our concentration has been really last week with some of the younger players, um, and then getting healthy and and um, and wanting to play our best football this week. What have you guys said to Khalil regarding his? Um, habit of running out of bounds sometimes when you can throw the ball away. Yeah, we've talked we've talked about that, you know. And we've we, we've talked about it right when it happens a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean we, we don't want to take sacks, you know, and, and um we getting getting rid of the ball is is premium and, and taking care of the ball. So yeah, we've had those conversations a couple times. Even in the game, during the week, yeah, we we, we talk about it a lot. Instinct to not want to give up on a play. I don't know. I think he, you know, he's the first thing with quarterbacks, you know, the scramble, the hardest thing to teach them is keep their eyes downfield, right? This guy's just different. And so his eyes are downfield. He's looking to do some things. So I think sometimes he just ran out of real estate, didn't know where he was, and trying to extend the play. But yeah, there's, there's things that, that, as I said before, there's things that uh, he can improve on, there's things that we can all improve on. That, that would be one of them. Um, yeah, he, he um, you know, he, it wasn't because we didn't, I'll just put it this way, we didn't take him out just because we wanted to take him out last week. So um, he got, we got nicked up there early in the game. So I, I don't know. I mean, 
and he didn't do a lot last week of practice. So, um, like I said, I'll have a better feeling for where we are this afternoon. Did you get a chance to watch that Panthers Cardinals game? Two of your former quarterbacks going up against each other. Yesterday? Didn't get a chance to see it. I was traveling yesterday back, so um, uh, getting back here. How influential do you think Kelly's offenses in Oregon have been in the coaching profession? You know, Chip's been around a long time, and um, you know, I, I think um, the way that they kind of burst on the scene, right, from the, and, and how they did things um, offensively, it was it was different. It was different than, than a lot of people. With with uh, yeah, every, a lot of people were using tempo, but uh, not as much motion, not as much pre-snap motion, not a lot of things, and going that fast. So it's had a you know he's he's had a a uh, uh, big impact on college football, you know, and, and RPO systems and things like that, that that have come out of that have, you know, you see it every Sunday now. So um, yeah, I, was, uh, I was laughing about somebody the other day we were talking about um, Kansas City and uh, the Chiefs and how, how much Andy Reid has changed over the years, right? Be be where he used to be maybe six, seven, eight, nine years ago. I mean, it's a RPO system with a quarterback that can really deal it. So, it, you know, if you you have those types of people and utilize the the, the speed and the, and the space of the field, um, like Chip did, and really started. You know, it, it it I think it did. I think it did change a lot of different things in football across the country. Not on not only, um, I mean, even at the professional level too. How much has his offense evolved? Since well, it evolved um, a lot in the last four weeks, right? From if you want to talk about that, uh, from three tight ends to you know running around, to shifting and trading and motion and bunch and to uh, spreading it out, and so it's you know that's the kind of coach he is. You know, he started off the season and looked like he was, you know, they they were headed down a certain path of personnel, and um, for whatever reason. You know, they weren't having much the, the success they wanted, and that tells you what kind of coach he is to go in and just say, look, we're going to do this. We're in, and to go win a football game like that um, and, and really change things, you know, just, that just tells you what kind of coach he is. Has you ever foreseen the kind of impact his offense would have on just the overall game? I don't know if he foresee. I, you know, I think what happened was because they were so successful, right, I mean, he's done things like that in the past, and there are other people doing things like that. But because they were so successful during that time, I think that had a big, a, a big impact on it. Because any time you see somebody like you know when they're winning that those types of games, and getting to, um, you know, to the BCS bowls, getting to um, some championship type games, you know, that's that's whatever you're doing offensively or defensively, you're going to get attention of, of everybody. You guys had several defenders play all of these snaps against Texas Tech. Is that something that you felt that you could do because you had a bye the following week, or is it more of the direction that you're heading as far as just No, we'd like to play more people. We really would, right? But, uh, you know, we'd also want to win the game. So um, you, you got to remember, you know, it, it wasn't always 28-14 in that game. It was, I mean, it was, we were behind, right, in the third quarter. So we had to have get our best people out there to give us a chance to play, to, to win the game. So, you know, we, we've got some guys, and that's what the bye week was for, you know, to, to really kind of catch your breath, but also keep getting these young guys better. And, um, you know, the, the package that we used was working. Um, and so because of that, you know, some experienced players out there with, the, with all three linebackers playing at one time, because um, Pandy – he gives us the opportunity to, to he's, a, he's a really good pass rusher also. Uh, and, and, but he can drop and play some things, and we can change defenses with him. So, yeah, we'd like to get some of these younger guys going. Day Day Coleman needs to get some more, uh, get some guys on the field. You know, we, and, you know, in that type of game, too, you, know, you probably saw more of the three linebackers on the field and, and, and Jace inside playing uh, in coverage. And, you know, Tristan Cooper's been playing in that. So it just was, it was working. Um, we got confidence in, in those guys out there. They're active. And, and, but, yeah, we'd like to play more guys. ESPN uh, reported during the game that you guys have 72 scholarship players 
at the moment or in the low 70s, I guess. Has that been a hindrance at all? Um, yeah, I think it's a, well, it's a combination of things. You know, you, you, everybody wants depth, right? Um, and so in recruiting, um, you know, the, it's, it's how you manage the roster. So, you know, I don't know that it's a, it's a hindrance. Yeah, we'd like to have more guys, um, but we need, need to have the right guys. So, um, you know, just to have guys doesn't, doesn't really help you. You know, it, I guess it does, but, it, but not in the long run, right? So we want the right guys. And so the, the, that gives us another chance to uh, have a full class. And, you know, we made the decision the first year I got I, I was a, really the first coach uh, ever to, you know, I, I, I think I got here, what, January 14th or 15th, right? The middle of, we got two weeks to go in, in recruiting, and it was the first year of early signing date. So it was really the first of its kind. So you got two weeks, you got to figure out, hey, do we just run around looking for guys to fill up a roster, or do we take that next year and really uh, evaluate what we need? Uh, and, and, and after going through spring football, and just because there's numbers at a position doesn't mean that all those guys are, are, are really good at what they're doing. It's just a number's a number. So, you know, that's, that's a process of evaluating your roster um, and then recruiting to, to, your, to your roster and, and your, your, philo you know, your philosophy and your, your needs. So that's where we are right now. And... and uh, so that's why the you know the evaluation process is the way it is, and that's why we're all out recruiting last weekend. There are about five true freshmen that I think have appeared in all three games, and with the four-game uh, maximum that you can play without getting uh, losing eligibility, do you start factoring that into with you reserves? Bet. Yep, you bet. We, we had that conversation, started that conversation last week based on practice, right? And so, um, you know, there's there's you're right. It's about right, the right number. So um, that conversation will be really had this week and then beginning of the next week. So. Does that involve like having to pull a guy aside and say, hey, we, we, uh, we want to keep you more for the future? Or? Yeah, we have those conversations. You know, there's other guys that we, we have the other conversation with too that says, you know, that say, you, you, you're playing, right? And you want to play. And, and uh, you know, we got a couple guys in that boat that, they're playing special teams, they're kickoff coverage and punt, and you know, they're getting 25, 30 snaps a game in, in special teams. So we can get Tony Fields and Pandy and some of these guys off the field. So, and that's valuable, valuable experience. Yeah, so we'll, we'll make those decisions. You know, you get the four, you get the four. And then, and, you know, but we'll, we're having those conversations right now with players. I always have the conversation usually with, with parents too and, uh, and players so that everybody's on the same page. It has to be uh, refreshing not having to worry about that after one game, like, oh, I, I played yeah. this guy. Oh, yeah, and it's bit. And, you know, I, I think it's good for the game. I think it's uh, player safety, right? The more guys that you can play, um, it gives you an opportunity to, to get some guys off the field and get these guys some experience. So um, I think it's been, a, been a, one of the best rule changes um, in college football. I think it's, it's really helped grow up some guys, um, keep them engaged instead of just being on the scout team, being somewhere, you know, the other team this week, you know, knowing that they have the ability to, to play in the game. Um, I think it's been a great rule, great change. What's allowed uh, Kion Bars to be one of those freshmen that, that's able to get into that rotation? Get a look well, he's he's uh, 295 pounds. <laughs> that's, that's one reason, right? So, uh, and he's a D lineman, and you know th those types of rotations. He's been getting better every week, and uh, you know a lot of these young guys. What what happens, particularly with big guys, right? The, the guys that got here during fall camp, they're getting in shape. Trayvon Mason, uh, these guys are you know they're big men, and it's hot out there. So they. Uh, you know, they've been playing themselves into shape, you know, particularly Trayvon and, and, and Bars because you know, Bars was like 290, almost 300 when he walked in the door. He's probably 290 right now in a lot better shape. I think Trayvon's going the other way, though. We've got to check his weight today. So he's, uh, he's getting bigger by the day. But those guys are getting in shape. And, um, uh, you know, that, it takes them a little bit longer. But he's a young, athletic guy. Um, that's 290, 300 pounds, strong, quick. Um, 
So, yeah, he can help us. He can help us win. He has been helping us. I think a lot of us thought that Cedric Peterson was going to be a real the go-to guy as near receiving core. He hasn't gotten a ton of targets so far. Did up the big play at the end of the game. How would you assess his play so far? This season? I mean, he's been he's been solid. He's been solid throughout camp. He's a leader, um, not just in the receiver group, but on the, on the team. Um, always steady. Uh, just a good player. I mean, but what we had, what, 12, 13 guys catch balls? Something like that this year. So, yeah, we're spreading it around a little bit. I think we're getting more production, um, obviously, out of our running backs and throwing them the ball. And, uh, but, you know, he's, he said, always solid. He's, he's having a, a good year. He got, got the big play, a little double move down in the sideline to get us loose. So, no, he's a solid player and, and a solid guy, and a, a good teammate, and, and well respected on this team. How do you evaluate JB Brown through these first three games? Who's that? JB Brown. Um, you know, he's we've moved him around a little bit, so um, you know he's he's been pretty solid, and I know he probably wants to get some more production. We'd like to get that out of him, but you know we we rotated a lot of the defensive linemen to try to keep them fresh, particularly in a game like last week two weeks ago where there's a tempo situation for the big guys. So he gives us the ability to play him inside and outside. So, you know, so he's, that's, that's tough duty because he's, you know, he's, he, he's got rush passer sometimes and he's got to play three technique, uh, take on double teams inside. You know, that's, that's, that's tough duty, but you know, he's, he's handling it. What aspect of the team still concerns you the most heading into basketball? Everything concerns me. You know, I mean, it's just we're heading into Pac-12 play, and and uh, you know, you're as head coach, you're always concerned about everything. You know, you got a really explosive team um, this week who's coming off of um, a big victory. Um, you've got an explosive return game, right? They get, you know, they lead the country in punt returns, um, kickoff return. They're really high, so you know, you, you got that that aspect of it and a team that uh, that uh, is coming off of a, a should be very very confident coming in here right based on what they did last week so uh, to a top 20 team and and so everything always this time of year I mean on Monday the more you watch the tape you know you're just like it's a, it's they're a different football team right now than they were from game one but then again so are we is the punter job still open for competition um yeah, we we still we're still working through that, you know, getting those guys. We're, we're charting everything. It's a competition, so um, there's a lot of there's a lot of positions like that right now, you know. So um, you know, even at even our at right tackle situation, we're splitting reps there between Peyton and Fears and and uh, who's done a nice job and, and Edward. I mean, uh, you know, they they went just about half and half, and um, so. I think that that has really helped both of them because they're staying fresh and doing some things and that competition has been healthy and they've, they've both done a nice job.